Hi, I'm Cynthia Schiller. Please like and subscribe. We're going to talk about uh, the homeless narcissist. Um, how does this happen so often? Uh, the two that I were with were not homeless. They were very professional. They wanted to strive to be the best. So some uh, narcissists can keep long-term jobs. Um, depends on what they're happy with. But a lot of narcissists um, often will quit jobs at the drop of a hat. They don't think towards the future, what's responsible. Um, if they don't like something, they don't want to do it. That's very common with narcissists on anything. If they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it. And they don't think about the consequences, just like you can see in your relationship. Do they really care about the consequences of their actions? They don't think through things. Uh, they do have that childlike mentality. Kids don't think about those things. And a lot of mental illness causes homelessness, like schizophrenics. Um, you know, it's like uh, I heard before, it was like 90% of the homeless are schizophrenic. Um, they just got so much going on in their brain that that's what they focus on. Uh, you know, uh, it's hard for them to uh, focus or commit um, or foresee what's going to happen. They just don't care. They get caught up in the moments. So uh, it's kind of ironic that I'm reading through these messages. And um, uh, next door, where I've been telling you about my narcissistic neighbors, <laughs> they have an eviction notice. And he was telling me that um, another person in the community who I don't know very much about yet, but there's something intriguing on their mental stability. Uh, health, I don't know, but their mental stability. They, they, this person um, doesn't work. Uh, neither does The other one just got a job today, but he took time off uh, just because. Went through like $30,000 in a couple months. He cashed in his retirement to just kind of like party and relax. Um, he relied on other people to pay the bills, um, but they have their mental illness, drug habits, things like that. So they're not being responsible. So narcissists, let's talk about the drug habits. Uh, sometimes they'll either drink too much or uh, indulge in drugs. Um, a lot of people with mental illnesses uh, will do that because they're trying to uh, uh, escape in a sense uh, or calm their brain. When they drink, it calms their brain and they feel more themselves. Um, and they don't give a crap as much as if somebody's judging them. It gets rid of inhibitions. And narcissists with that fragile ego have inhibitions. They need to fit in or they need to be acknowledged, admired. Um, so whether it's good or bad attention, they need attention. So their brain calms down when they're doing all these things. But when you're doing all those things, uh, it costs more. Um, Drugs can uh, overtake your life, so can alcohol, and that becomes an addiction, and that's what their focus is. Their focus is themselves. Their focus now could be uh, an addiction, and it consumes their life, so instead of paying their rent, they're going to pay for drugs or alcohol. Uh, a lot of them uh, are good looking, or they're confident that they could find somebody um, to just move in with they're used to just i don't know i'll just go to the bar uh make somebody fall in love with me and i got a place to stay so they're survivors that way um but that's not fair to the people that they they trick and they use it's all about themselves and they'll do what it takes to get their needs met so there is a pattern of a lot of narcissists going from place to place to place and as our uh, mental illness is, is increasing, especially in the US, uh, that's where I'm from, that's what I know. Uh, I know we have the highest mental health problems in the world, um, but as I teach throughout the years, you see more and more of uh, homelessness. And uh, sometimes um, in the school system, homelessness uh, doesn't mean you're sleeping on the streets, but it means you don't have a concrete place to stay. So whether you're bebopping between grandmas and uh, your cousins and your aunts, and maybe now your mom's boyfriend's house for a little bit, and just things like that, that's what homelessness is. Um, so this increase, uh, the school I was at, what do we have, 86 or 68% uh, homeless. Like, that's a lot. 
I don't know, what do we have, like a thousand kids and that 700 kids, 100% um, free lunch uh, because they don't have the finances. Um, and a lot of that is due to um, mental illness, the ability to commit to anything. We're training ourselves uh, to not commit to things. Divorce, yeah, we'll, do, we'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work, we'll just get divorced. Um, I, uh, uh, contracts don't mean crap anymore. I had a contract at the school, They could, and it's dumb. Why do we have this contract other than we agree to this is how much money? Just put that in there. That's how much money I'm going to give you if you do this amount of days. Um, but it's like, we can fire you without cause. You can quit without cause, but give us two weeks notice, please. You can still do it without. You're not going to go to jail. You're not going to get fined. Um, it's rude, but you can still do it. So what, what do contracts mean anymore? You know, there are some uh, contracts that are up upheld. Um, but as far as uh, commitment to responsibility uh, for income, I don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to say because it depends on what but it's like a right to work or you can quit, you can get fired. So what, what is, it's like a promise that they can take back and they even say it in the contract. Like, why do we even have it? So, uh, you know, um, they just often, your grandiose are probably gonna want your professional jobs or they're gonna schmooze somebody into giving them some corporate job because they just think they're entitled to that. So the vulnerable ones, in my opinion, um, would be more like, um, yeah, I, you know, I'll just work at a gas station or I could deliver papers as long as I have enough money for whatever. Um, you know, they're more, uh, who cares? Like I'm making do, I got my freedom. I can go smoke pot or do whatever. Uh, as long as I get that, that's fine. Uh, they just make their way through life. Um, some are, uh, like I said, mine were pretty professional, goal oriented. They had to have the best of the best. So they made sure they had that. Others feel entitled or others, uh, in my perception, it's um, they, in a sense, feel that they're worthless. So yeah, I'm just destined to live on the streets or I'm just destined and um, they just go into survival mode. Um, and uh, a lot of times they're so used to things being taken from them. Uh, part of it is they destroy what was given to them, but they're so used to it. It's like, whatever, just another day, just that that's gone too. And uh, I was at the beach today and I, I kind of want to buy a house. And I was kind of like, do I want a pool or do I want a house on the lake? And you think about all the finances and things like that. And I'm like, I'm the type I get really cold. So I don't go in the water unless it's really warm because like uh, I go numb. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what do I do? And then I noticed like um, the water at the lake uh, is warmer than I had a house with a pool and before. And I'm kind of thinking like, why does it happen? You know, because the pool um, is smaller, you know, and it should heat up quicker. Um, and I kind of was thinking that, you know, the, the lake is so large that um, it kind of holds the heat throughout the night. Um, and then, you know, it releases some and it gets rewarmed by the sun and it, it just builds up. Um, also with the shallow waters, uh, how uh, it kind of flows in and, and, you know, there's movement, things like that. The pool uh, is stagnant, it's not moving. Um, it's deeper without the shallow. So you have to warm from quite a distance. And, you know, unless you're getting in it, it's not getting churned up. Um, so I kind of want to relate that to, to narcissism. Like our narcissists are really cold sometimes. Why does that happen? Um, we're the lake. We're all born a lake and uh, it's kind of like uh, we're, we're built with a capacity to be self-sufficient, how lakes have, you know, the vegetation that kind of, there's some warmth from that, the, the you know, um, the movement to, to turn it up. Uh, that's like our thought process is going um, and we retain the heat. 
if we're like a lake, kind of like um, the lake is our capacity to love. And the narcissist is, is smaller. Their brain capacity shrunk, their lake shrunk. And I'm doing an analogy. So it's like their brain shrunk and there's only so much. So it cools off. It's not as deep They're, um, or, or as abundant. So we're full of love and we're trying to give love so we can give some away. And we get depleted a little bit, but the narcissist, when they give away any love, they feel a, a bigger depletion. Just like you take a gallon of water out of a pool, it's going to have a, a more profound effect than a gallon of water out of a lake. So we're giving and giving and giving to the point where we start to dry up. Our love is starting to go and we're, we're kind of in panic mode. Like this is destroying everything. We see everything falling apart and everything working together is not working together anymore. So um, the narcissist is shallow. There's not much capacity to the narcissist brain. There's not because part of it's gone because of the brain damage. And, you know, they don't think things through. They, they are type of creature that just lives in the moment because they are in that infantile or juvenile state to where they just live in the mo moment they're uh carefree careless and that's another thing too they're careless and it leads to their demise so there's you know those two types of narcissists the grandiose and the vulnerable and the poor pity ones the vulnerable ones are the ones that i see losing their jobs losing uh or quitting their jobs being evicted and it's it's just uh their priorities the grandiose their priority is upper image the vulnerable are it's, it's just gonna happen i just suck and every you know um so it seems um the the vulnerable ones to me seem more angry uh the uh ones that i've come in contact that are more grandiose are more dismissive um and, and they're all entitled in some way they just have to suck us dry and um i just thought it was a really interesting comment and that's my take on it the ones that i see losing their jobs uh seem or getting evicted um they they create it themselves like my next door you know i see what they're doing i see what they're investing in i see their motivation um you know uh one uh, has court tomorrow on uh drunk driving for the fourth time for the fourth time you'd think they'd learn about it um they drive on suspended license or revoked licenses and they, they cause their own chaos so some of it is situational, others they create on purpose. Like that one did not want to create a fourth uh, felony, um, risking years. I want to say he said 20. I, I don't know if it's 20 years. That's a long time. I don't know. But uh, several years. I think he said he, he don't probably only have to do two. But um, like good, I, I don't know. Uh, but definitely could go to jail uh prison and um the chaos that they create on the other side is they're so used to all this chaos coming their way because of their actions that they need like chaos because that's what life means to them they grew up in chaos they're comfortable in chaos they don't want certain kinds of chaos but they definitely want chaos and it's self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, um, they uh, destroy everything that comes in their way. The, the you know, uh, they take advantage of everything and eventually it catches up to them. Like it's catching up to them now. And, um, you know, they are my neighbors. Uh, you know, I keep it at a superficial level. Um, some narcissists are enjoyable to talk to, you know, um, but if you get too involved, that's when, like, I see the toxicity in uh, the uh, closer relationships that they have with other people, um, you know, the, the type of people that they hang out with, 
you know, uh, and be careful on that. I had a viewer before had asked, uh, what do I do? Like, um, I have a friend, uh, I believe that friend was okay, like not mentally ill or disordered, um, and had said, you know, they're kind of hanging around with the wrong people. What do I do? And I said, well, you know, it is kind of, we have to focus on how people treat us and that's up to you what you do. Um, be in a healthy relationship. So the friendship is healthy, but you can sometimes get guilty by association. Uh, you know, if you, um, uh, were uh, like, I was in law school years ago, so I don't know if it's still current, but, uh, like, um, if you frequent a house of prostitution, you can get charges of lewd and lascivious behavior, even if you didn't do anything just because you were there um so be careful the the roads these people take you down even if you're doing the right thing you just walked in what's the big deal i'm not doing anything i didn't even know that that's what we were i thought we were going to a regular hangout um you know or th they're going to get you caught up in well let's just go to an after hours and you're like oh. they're like trust me it's safe and you get busted so um even if you're not necessarily indulging in drugs or prostitution or whatever it is uh it can ex destroy your life too, you know. Uh, I believe if you get that lewd and lascivious, you have to be on the uh, sex. No, I know that uh, that you have to register as a sex offender. So even just frequenting something, not even knowing, you might have to be on a sex registry. Uh, good luck getting um, certain jobs or being allowed to even pick your kids up at school. Uh, it can destroy your life. That's why. Um, surround yourself with the right kind of people because narcissists um kind of drain you whether it's uh you know i have a this is a little much information but i have an aunt who uh has tried to commit suicide several times and she is a psychiatrist colleges i believe colleges and um you hear all these terrible stories all day long all these terrible terrible stories and it gets depressing you know, and um, it infiltrates you, you know, so if we're sitting here thinking about our narcissist and but they had a bad childhood and they're just, you know, they're getting evicted now and I just want to help them or on and on and on, you know, uh, it can destroy your soul. And, you know, my aunt, it, she, uh, like uh, she, she's very well off and seems to have the world on her you know in her hands and is sad she's sad now because depression's real and so if you guys are going through that uh there are suicide hotlines there's nami n-a-m-i um that'll help you if you're in the united states um other resources take your mental health seriously because it can be deadly take your broken heart seriously because people can die of a broken heart where your aorta like separates like it can happen you can stress yourself out uh getting a stroke and it's important to take care of yourself once you get to that point where you realize this is damaging that nothing you are doing is making a difference, that even when you try, it makes it worse. That's mind blowing. When we try to do the right thing, it makes it worse. That's when it's toxic. And um, mental illness, uh, they, uh, the DSM-5 uh, talks a lot about how it is related to distress. So if something puts you into distress in your life, it's starting to go towards mental illness and nip it in the bud uh rewire that brain get healthy again um don't don't just like uh schizophrenia is uh kind of like interesting uh you go through life you got you know stressors or whatever but once you get to a certain level you can't come back um you're stuck in schizophrenic illness um it's like a threshold that you go over and you can't come back um take care of yourself 
and I'll help you along the way. Feel free to let me know if there's any issues that I can help you work through or any topics you'd like to talk about because this is some serious stuff and you need your feelings validated. I understand what you're going through. I am not dismissing how hard it is. I'm not dismissing that sometimes we just want to cry. Sometimes we don't give a crap about anything, but that's where we're starting to turn into, um, not necessarily a narcissist, but we're focusing on ourselves um, and letting the outside world. Um, it's like a disconnect that we're starting. So focus on yourself, but keep your connections with the world. Um, rely on your friends um share your feelings don't keep them all bottled up because it's like an implosion and i know it's hard i know it's hard uh today i did not want to go to the beach i kind of wanted to go to the beach but i was so tired and i'm like i'm just gonna take a nap like i'm still struggling too you guys it takes a while to heal um but i'm like no i need you know need to exercise uh so i'm, I'm only gonna go for half hour 45 minutes i did it and i'm rejuvenated i'm probably going to be up another several hours and i'm so glad i did that i got the sun i got the exercise i felt the cool water um and when you exercise even if it's just a little bit you're keeping your body in shape you're keeping your mind in a good place and you're getting out and doing stuff you know, try to do it outside if you can, or go to the YMCA or join a gym. Be careful with this COVID stuff too. Be, do your, um, what's best for you. Uh, today, uh, you know, um, things are a little bit different, but it's summer here right now and enjoy the outside. That's free. I spent $17 for a season pass at the lake. Uh, I can go as much as I want. That's not that much money. I'm lucky to live in Michigan where we have like, was it one lake within every three miles? There's so many lakes, but some of us can't do that. But get out there, enjoy your life. And please let me know if there's something I can do to help you. See you soon.